Oh, it's funky. Give you guys just a minute or two. It's Monday. Ugh. Even though it wasn't that warm, it looks like I got sunburned on my nose. <laughs> oh well, that's okay. Sunshine's good. Good, I start to see some people joining. Excellent. When you're on here, um, please just go in the comments and say hi. Tell me what you're up to. Tell me what you're working on. Um, if you watch this later and it's a replay, comment in the comments that you're watching it on a replay. I like to know who's watching live and who's watching a replay. Hi, Lisa. Hi, Julie. Hi, Jackie. You made it to PA. <laughs> Good. Hi, Holly. Hi, Diane. Yay. Hi, Nicole. Good. We got some people on here. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Today's going to be a little bit different because I'm going to attempt walking around a little bit to talk about a few different things. So we'll see how that goes. Hi, Sherry. Hi, Jody. Mm. Ah. Holly's working on the curly cue as you watch. Good. Excellent. I need to start. Um, Karen and I were talking the other day. I want to start like a little tube scarf with all of my dreaming color um, smushy with cashmere leftovers, my scraps. So I have a lot of samples of all the different colors they have when people ask and it's just going to be stockinette. So I'll just like a giant tube sock essentially. Hi Chandra. Hi Mary. Hi Cheryl. Hi Julie. Yay. Sarah still at work multitasking. One week left right before taxes are do I just sent my CPA the stuff today? <laughs> Hi, Mercina. Section 11 on the temperance. Oh, yes, that last section you think you're done because you're in the final thing and it takes forever to do. <laughs> Diane, Norrell's Coral Sunrise Shawl. Cool. All right, well, I'm going to go ahead and get started. Happy Monday. This is Monday Motivation with Kristen, me owner of the Little Yarn Shop in downtown Saginaw. Hours for the shop are Wednesday through Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. I'm inside the SVRC Marketplace, so if you come down here, you better come hungry because there's a lot of really good food around here. Um, I'm doing these every Monday at 7, so if this is your first one, you should be able to go back into past videos and see any of the ones we've done before I talk about different kits and different projects and I inevitably will tell you guys some sort of tip or tidbit because I don't know <laughs> sometimes I have good good ideas <laughs> um, so that's who I am that's where we are let's talk about knitting you guys are telling me what you're working on um, for those of you that jumped on a little bit late please you know, pop on the comments tell me hi tell me what you're working on I'm working on a couple different things right now um, last week Joan asked me about my crocheted top and I actually did get that back out to work on a little bit I can never pronounce it right it's called mosaica goons I did take Spanish and I don't think it's I know it's not in Spanish it's in Turkish I didn't take Turkish. <laughs> Hi, Lori. Mary working on reunion cardigan. Cool. So this is the top. Mosaica Goons. It's a crochet top. Starts at the bottom. I am done with the fun part. I'm done with the mosaic part. Whoop. Almost pulled my yarn off the table. Doesn't that look cool? So this is done with um, fingering weight or sock weight yarn. I'm using Malabrigo sock for the main body color. So like I said, I'm done with the color work. The rest of the body is just gonna be this solid. I did just show a picture, there's, there's one. 
So I only have that much more to do. <laughs> That's all. <laughs> it's just, it's not the quickest project. Crochet used to be so much faster for me. I'll get there. But I'm also working on the crochet mitts as the partner to the um, knit ones that I, that I was working on last week. So the mitts that I'm working on are, this one's inside out because I had to, to seam it up, spikelet mitts. So this is the crocheted one. I, got, I have half a mitt done. So it's kind of cool construction, just like the knit one was, was made side, by, side to side this way. So is the crochet one. So this is your, here we go. That's your cast on down there. You do all this cool patterning. Isn't that neat? They're called little spikelets, she calls them. I just finished the thumb. Whoops. It's supposed to go on this hand, so that goes on the back. So I got a thumb, I got a back of a hand. Now I just need to finish the rest of it. So that's the crochet version. Also fingering weight yarn. It's not taking very much yarn at all. I still have a lot left in this ball. These are my finished, my two finished mitts. The <laughs> totally wild mitts. So the first one I mentioned last week, I followed exactly the way the pattern was. They're really nice and long. The pattern originally is written to have a provisional cast on down this edge, which I also didn't follow the pattern. The very first row was supposed to have a pearl ridge and I didn't do that. <laughs> but nobody's ever gonna know, right? You guys not, are not gonna tell anybody. So it used um, Kitchener stitch to graft the thumb and down the side when it was done. I really like how they fit. I love really long mitts like this. If it's too much, you can always fold them down and kind of keep them out of the way. Ha, look, there are my ends. I have not blocked these yet. I have a tendency to, I try, to weave in my ends, but I always leave just enough because, you know, knits change. Ah, there's one too. I leave enough so they're not gonna pop out too much when I block them. So the first one I did the way it was written. The second one I did with a, huh, I must have done a pretty decent job. I can't see where I seamed it up. <laughs> well, good for me, I guess. The second one I did not do, ah, there it is. So right here is where I seamed it and I just did, um, what is it called, mattress stitch where you're going back and forth. So I did a regular cast on, no fussing with the crochet provisional cast on. Um, Kathy, you would love to make these. And then the same thing for the thumb. There's some interesting construction. I don't want to talk about it too much because it is a pay for pattern, but um, essentially what I did was where they had you put stitches on hold, I bound them off. And really you can't tell. I'll put them both on so you can see. You can't tell much difference. Really much at all. Nobody's gonna notice that one little seam on one side versus the other. They feel fine, there's not a funny ridge where I seamed them up. So that's the one thing I finished this week. I had a little bit of a snafu, let's call it, hiccup with the yarn that I was swatching with last week. So I showed you guys last week my cool swatch with all the different size needles, fours, fives, and sixes, so I could see what kind of fabric I wanted. Well, when I, when I ordered the yarn from the company, I ordered one skein of every color and to see what the colors look like so I would have them here when it's time to do the four day knit along. Um, Diane, are they fingering weight yarn? Yes, yes, both of those mitts, the crochet and the knit are fingering weight yarn. I'm using the same yarn for both just because I wanted to have a, kind of an even comparison. So my swatch is for um, Marie Green, who is also known as Olive Knits, for her summer knit along, her four day sweater knit along. That's about all I can tell you guys. 
but I ordered a skein in each color, decided I really loved this coral color. So I ordered a bag of it so I could work on my shop sample. And that's the color in the bag. Do you guys see that difference? It's pretty, it's pretty startling. I thought maybe it was because I washed and blocked this that maybe if it, the color got a little less intense. That is not the case. They are just two very different dye lots. So under normal circumstances, if it was just a little bit of a difference, I would, um, and my plan was to start with the skein that I had, get a certain point in the sweater, and then blend the next color in. This is not gonna blend. It's, it's different enough, and I'm, I'm torn right now because there, there are some little, <laughs> This is hard to talk about without giving too much away. There are some pattern elements in it where I could show off and almost use the color difference to my advantage. Um, but essentially I have to rip out the whole first game of everything that I did and start over. So, um, Melissa, can you stripe it? Well, yes and no. That's kind of what I think I'm gonna do, but I want it I want to do it in a way that looks intentional so I could do that I could use the lighter skein just for the collar you know anywhere the ribbing is the cuffs the collar down at the bottom um, I don't know I'm probably gonna play around with it a little bit and see but I'm kind of bummed on that because I thought I was making good progress on my shop sample I don't need it until July but come on I wanted to get it done so that's kind of my my little, my hiccup for the week. I'm, a, I'm bummed about it for sure. So the other project that I'm working on, I'm going to talk about in a minute, but first I want to talk about what I'm wearing. So I think a few weeks back, I wore my gray version of this sweater, which is, um, it's called the Wave of Change. It's written to be long sleeved, but I decided, see my tattoo, campfires. I decided I'd do a short sleeve one just to kind of check it out and see what it looks like. Um, so this one is done with Sugarbush Yarns Canoe. This really cool stuff. Isn't that fun? It's like this little chain with wool in the middle of it. So it's 61% wool, 20 6% alpaca, 13% polyamide, which nylon, I guess, essentially. Um, it's really, it's really lightweight, uh, but it's warmer than I thought it was going to be. So I would probably, if I use this again, I would make a long sleeve one and have it more as a, um, a fall, spring or fall coat versus, I was kind of thinking it would be more of a warm weather sort of thing. But Wave of Change, I love this pattern. I know I talked about it before, but I can't talk about it enough. It's by Denise Bayron. Um, the bust, the finished bust size on it goes from 36 inch to 63 inch. So it's very size inclusive. Uh, she, she just came out with a pullover version, which I think is really neat too. Um, it's, a, it's a very easy construction to follow the pullover would be even easier you're not picking up any button or not button bands but front bands um, this one I knit to the specifications of the pattern so it's a little bit shorter let's see oh and I do have this yarn in other colors too I think this mustard one is really cool this dark green I initially ordered this to make a sweater for my husband and then, well, he was supposed to make the sweater and that didn't go very far. So we got as far as swatching with it. It's got this really cool tweedy look. It's kind of neat. And then this beautiful mm, orchid and a navy. 
So the short sleeve version in the second size, which is what this is, took 475 yards. It calls for anywhere from 563 to just over a thousand. Um, I have lots of options for that. So I'm gonna stand up, I'll show you the bottom of the sweater, and then we'll talk about my other version of this and my other work in progress. So, uh, this is how it's written. It's written to be not necessarily cropped, but right at your waistline. The, the gray one that I did, I added another repeat, which would be another, eh, whatever that is, inch and a half, two inches in length. But that's the benefit of doing a sweater top down is that you can keep trying it on, see when it's the length you want, and go from there. You just need to make sure that you have enough yarn. Okay, so we're going to go on a little walk over to the cotton section. And I apologize if the lighting is not that great over here. Um, I was playing around with it a little bit, and I, I didn't come up with a good solution yet. So... <laughs> we'll see how this goes. This is my my makeshift my makeshift little stand here. So this is the short sleeve green version. The one that I wore before is this one. Out of this one is knit out of Juniper Moon Cumulus. I love this stuff. Um, It is Israeli Mako cotton, 94% cotton, 6% nylon. It's, it also has kind of a really cool chain construction that makes it lightweight. Uh, the pattern calls for bulky. This is, they call this a worsted, but it's flexible enough and it's, um, it kind of folds enough that you can use it for a bulky yarn, like for the wave of change. So the same yarn comes in solids it comes in these cool little they call them dappled i'm gonna see if i can do something else you guys it's too dark over here let's see what i could do i may just have to hold you hopefully you don't get too dizzy so dappled is this really really neat um kind of stripes but is more of kind of a gradual change it's not gonna pool it definitely has kind of a change in color. And then they have rainbow. And yes, they have rainbow colors, but they also have more neutral colors. So they come in these so, cumulus, rainbow. Isn't that so cool? So this is, when you're looking at a yarn like this in a cake and you see sections along the outside, let's see how I can do this. Haha, <laughs> see if I can prop it up. Okay. Sections along the outside. So where you see it's purple, and then it goes into a chunk of what? The pink. Well, that's going the wrong way. Purple, then the blue, then the teal. I can look at that and, and be able to see that it is a um, kind of a gradient, a slow color change yarn. What I did with that yarn was this. This is the Op Art Baby Blanket. Isn't that cool? Op Art Baby Blanket. It took two of the rainbow and two of the solid white color. Um, and what I did and what I'm doing with the curly cue that I'm working on is... Um, the, all the balls of the same color start the same way. So it's a little bit easier if you look at a different kind of color. So if we look at this one, you see it's dark on the outside and lighter in the middle. And they all, each, each ball is like that. So what I think looks the most fluid or smooth is to start one on the outside from the outside of the ball and work your way in and then the next one start on the inside of the ball and work your way out so that's what i did with this so you can see it started with it starts here in the middle started with the pink transition to the purple then the blues the greens then the yellows this yellow here 
is where I started my second ball. Isn't that crazy to think that? All this, the color in this was all one ball. And then these last two sections took the same amount of yarn, but I started the second one with the yellow and went in the reverse order. So um, I just think that's a, a, a more fluid way to do it. You could go the same direction with each ball of yarn. You would just see like in that case, it would go right from yellow to, um, to pink. It wouldn't, it wouldn't gradiate back. Would you start it like that for the curly cute? Yes, and I will show you, Holly. I, I went through like six different ideas for what I wanted to do for the curly cue. All right, I might need to set you guys down for this, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. So the curly cue coverlet is what we're doing for our knit along, meeting every Thursday night on Zoom. But yes, so to answer Holly's question, yes. So I'm using two different colors. The color on the inside is one of those cumulus dappled. This guy. So you can see it's kind of a slow color change. It's darker in the middle, lighter on the edges. Then my color that's going around the outside, we're gonna go back to the table because it's too dark over here. And I can't hold the phone and talk to you guys but for those of you that don't come in the store very often you get <laughs> kind of a dizzying little tour this way okay so back down this is the colorway that I chose Holly I'm not that far yet <laughs> we were camping this weekend so I had a lot of time this is the color that I chose it starts with this really dark charcoal on the outside transitions into kind of a bluey gray and then some browns so where you start on the first one, it doesn't really matter a whole lot. You're gonna need more than one skein for this anyway. So um, yeah, it's kind of dealer's choice, I guess. So the first ball, when I first started the curly cue, I started in the middle, which was this really light taupey color. And I like, I like the color changing yarns for these because you can really see the directions. So there was my first section. Then I had to do this little, the first point of my star. Then back to the outside shell. So you can see this goes from there, the same color, and then continued on here. Through the light gray, through the dark gray. That was my second shell, which is section three. I wanted to just see how far I could get with that one ball this weekend. I probably would have gone further, but I ran out of yarn. Section four still gets a little bit darker and I ended, I ran out of yarn at this point with the dark. So I just started my second one and now I'm pulling from the outside so it will start dark and then go light again. If you're using Holly, I know you asked about um, doing something like that. The, um, the yarn that you got, you may not have to deal with that too much. You're using the Malila and it's shorter color repeats. Um, these only go through each color once in the entire ball. So there's more of a drastic change. Mom, your curly cue is much smaller, tighter knit. I am trying to knit this tightly. I'm even using wood needles. I don't like wood needles. <laughs> Melissa's smaller too, but you're using a DK. Again, this is where, well, for one thing, it's a blanket. Gauge doesn't matter too much as long as you have enough yarn and I happen to know somebody who has some yarn. <laughs> um, but this is where that um, difference comes in with how I said this yarn could be used as a bulky. So um, it's got a little bit more flexibility. I'm on sevens, but, and I'm knitting tightly. I'll have to check the gauge on it and see where I am. I don't think I have a, no, I don't have a gauge thing over here. Oh, I do have a tape measure. 
the unofficial way to do gauge is I'm just gonna lay it out and check and see what it's supposed to be. So while I'm doing this, we can talk. The Curly Q coverlet is um, a pattern Deb has taught um, multiple times before. And it's a really cool construction. And once you see what's happening, I think it's pretty easy to, to move forward with it. Um, my, I got as far as I did kind of intentionally. I wanted to get through the first section of, well, the first time of doing each different section. So I, so I could help people since I haven't made it before. Deb has made it. Um, the Thursday Zooms. So if you want to join us on Thursday evenings from seven to eight Eastern on Zoom, um, I post the link in our craft along group. Melissa um, will post that in the um, comments. I think you can post that in these comments. I know it's different. Oh, look at that. It's there already. Um, so I, every Thursday, I'll post a link to the Zoom. We meet for an hour. Um, Deb will be on there. She also may at some point be more available on Thursdays in person but she's here on Saturdays and also available for anybody to pop in and schedule some time to sit with her. Lisa, is your Curly Q yarn cotton cumulus? Yes, it is. Isn't it lovely? It's lovely. So let me check my gauge. Really all I'm doing right now when I say I'm checking my gauge, I have a tape measure. I'm laying it out. It's a little bit tricky because there aren't very many rows of just stockinette but let's see over four inches i've got one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen so i have 15 stitches over four inches which is probably a lot less than what it calls for i want to say it calls for 18 but i could be very wrong and i keep losing my pattern so i can't check one of you guys might know. Deb probably knows. <laughs> but like I said, it's a blanket. This is really, really soft. I wanted to pick colors that would go with our camper. We got a new camper last year and the inside is kind of, um, it's kind of a, like a gray taupe color accent. So 22, oh man. <laughs> Holly, 22 stitches, is that for the DK weight or for the worsted weight, you guys? I know I'm a loose knitter, but holy cow, I'm I'm knitting tightly, like hard, having a hard time to um, slide the stitches. Worsted is 18. Oh, good. Now I don't feel so bad. <laughs> 34 rows, four inches. Yes. Okay. Melissa says worsted is 18. Okay. So now I don't feel so bad. Uh, I'm not as off as I thought I was. I, you guys had me panic there for a minute. So I can't wait to, to work on that more. But this yarn is really, really nice. Good for sweaters, good for blankets. Holly, keeping me on my toes. <laughs> Thanks. That's one of those things, my memory is awful, but every once in a while I, I think I remember something and then I second guess myself. So that's what I'm working on. I showed you my finished Totally Wild mitts. Um, we talked about my colors. Um, I'm curious to know from, from you all, um, put in the comments if you have a preference on what you would like to see either um, me wear and show as a shop sample or have it be my next project. Um, my debate is a cardigan uh, or a pullover, which would be more of winter garments, or a um, like a spring summer top. I've got a few of those around here. I know we talked about them a couple weeks back, but I'm I always like to have a sweater on the needles, and and I'm I'm not going to count the four day summer sweater because I can't show you guys that. So um, put it in the comments. Let me know what you what you would be interested in seeing. Um, I like to to pick things that I that I think you will enjoy. Now, last week, 
I talked a little bit about the butterfly shawl and how a contrast color makes such a difference. So I think I have a left, enough left of this for two kits. This is the color that my two samples are knit with. One of them is knit with black. One of them is knit with, not this yarn, but like a taupey colored yarn. But I want you to keep in mind that is the same Joan pullover with stranded color work. Ha <laughs> ha, very funny. <laughs> uh, um, yeah, that's probably not gonna happen, but thank you for your input. <laughs> <laughs> mm. So keep in mind the same the the two samples I'm going to show you they both use this color this yarn. So the one that catches most people's eye is this beauty. Isn't that gorgeous? So butterfly papillon that pattern Now, this is the same shawl with a cream background. They're both beautiful. Yeah, we'll put one, one way, one the other. Like a sari, but you see the difference. One is, I would call this one more understated. The, the one with a black contrast definitely has more pop more vibrancy it just blows me away and it blows other people away that the the color in the back well the main color the color changing yarn is the same in both so kind of a lesson in how mindful color choices makes a big difference um, a lot of times with projects if it's something like this if you're at my store we usually do this if you're at somebody else's um, yarn shop be sure to ask permission first but what I like to do to see how they um, how they might play together is I will un well of course this one I can't undo because it's all messed up well normally I would unwind this game there we go unwind the contrast game and kind of twist them together. It's not a science, obviously, but it's it gives you a little bit better idea how they're going to look when they're more closely entwined, I guess would be the way to put it. It just makes a big difference. Even if you only unwrap one of them and drape the other over, you see what a big difference it is. So that's one of my little tidbits. I just think it's amazing this yarn the difference and how it looks so like I said I have enough of this for two more of the papillon kits uh, you guys almost bought me out last week so it's popular it's beautiful if you like the color and don't want to knit this shawl um, one of these makes a pair of socks one of these would make a scarf, a small shawl. Two of these would make a, a really beautiful, um, larger wrap. Now, what else are you guys saying about sweaters? Lee, summer top, Lisa, summer top. Give us a hint about the what the four day sweater will be. Lisa, I would love to tell you whether it's a cardigan or a pullover or anything, but I am sworn to secrecy right now. I can't tell you the theme. I can't tell you the weight of yarn. I mean, I showed you my yarn, but we didn't talk too much about the actual yarn itself. Um, yep, not yet. Very soon. Um, I think within the next week or so, she's going to start uh, releasing some more information about it. Oh, Elaine says summer top. Holly says summer top. All right, you guys, I get it. Melissa, pull over with Intarja. Definitely not. <laughs> you have to know your strengths. And stranded color work is not my strength. I know I need to get better at it, but, um, and I have done two stranded color work pullovers, but uh, it's not my favorite thing. Julie, one for summer, one for winter. <laughs> 
Yeah, that's probably what I'll end up doing. All right, so we talked about the butterfly. Um, the other item that I am almost all out of is kits for the You Are Enough, uh, which was the LYS Day 2021. I, I still am having a hard time thinking that it's 2021, but Miss Julie was kind enough to loan her shawl sample to me. I'm gonna grab it because even hanging back there, it does not do it justice. Look at this beautiful thing. I know if, if you follow the, the page on Facebook, I posted it last week, but it's beautiful. And <laughs> Julie has this ability to just block the daylights out of her shawls and so um, I have heard for, from some people theirs is not this large but it could be get it wet soak it stretch it out pin it out block it it just turned out so beautifully so I have one one kit left of all of those that I got so if you're interested make sure you let me know they are not going to make any kits. Um, no more after this. This was, typically they don't even do a second run, but they uh, didn't even, um, they very much underestimated how popular it was going to be. So um, the kit is $85. It comes with all of the yarns, all the colors that you need. It also comes with a set of stitch markers, hand cut stitch markers. Christina, you got your kit this weekend. I saw it was not on my on my back shelf with your name on it, so yay! Um, they're just fantastic. There is a download code inside um, the kit with the um, with a code to get the pattern for free as long as you get it before June seventeenth. Uh, yeah, speak now or forever hold your peace. <laughs> so eighty five dollars for a kit. Last one I have. It's gorgeous. Julie, I wasn't sure how long that I would need to hold on to this for so I could show it off and people could um, really see what the kit looks like, but I have one left, so it might not be too long before you'll be forced to come back in and see me again. <laughs> Marcina, you're working on yours. Excellent. It's just gorgeous. The, the pink that's in here is the um, specialty color that they did for LYS Day. And it's just really cool. Holly said, I would like that last kit. All right, so there we go. She spoke now. Now you guys can forever hold your peace. Set that one aside. All right, I'm gonna take this off and I apologize. It's not the best look here for me, ladies, but, and gentlemen, if gentlemen are watching, I apologize, but it's warm in here. Okay, so the, what else do I have? Melissa, I want to put beads in mine. Christina, I got beads to put in mine. Oh, that's gonna be beautiful. So they're talking about the lace. I'm assuming you're talking about the lace down here, putting beads in it. That would be gorgeous. Christina's um, cowl is the one um, from the Nest and Burrow set from last fall and she put beautiful beads in there. My, <laughs> my four day knit along sweater may have beads in it. It may not call for it, but I might deviate a little bit on this just to give people a different idea. So maybe I can tell you that much, Lisa. We'll see. Um, let me look at my notes, see how I did. <laughs> So, um, also for the two butterfly kits that I have, those are $64.99 plus tax for the three skeins of yarn. Um, well actually it would be, it would be more than that because the pattern is kind of a pricey one. Holly never worked with beads. We're going to have to get you something that, that uses beads. Even if it's, um, Karen does a lot of her shawls with a beaded bind off, which looks really cool. But I was just recently looking at, um, some cute fingerless mitt patterns that have 
um, little beads on the back. Um, Bonnie, I don't know if Bonnie's on here this week. She's been on in the past, but I think some of the mitts that she was doing had a cable with some beads in there. I couldn't really tell. Beetle needle, yes. Beetle needle is is a must. Cora, Cora, for all the things you've done, you've never attempted beads? Come on. <laughs> you got one of those kits, right? You should put some beads in there. All right, so the last thing that I am going to talk about is the box of yarn that's on the floor. Technically, I already opened the box, but that's also because my, um, my child decided <laughs> she wanted to make the box into a, um, you know, something like a five-year-old would do. It's got eyes and ears. And then she tried to put the yarn back in there and say it was little peak, peak holes for people to see. Um, she's 15, you guys, but I love it. <laughs> I don't want her to grow up any faster. Yes, Christina's cowl. I'm going to grab it and show you. I don't have any more of these kits, but you can see the, the beads. <laughs> I have such lovely family members and friends that loan their samples to me. So this is my mom's cowl from the Nest and Burrow kit with this beautiful lace in there. And then Christina decided to take it up a notch and put beads in. You see how beautiful that looks? I wish they would glisten more the way they do when they're when you're here in the shop. Diane, if we want to add beads to the shawl, is there a tutorial on how to do that? Um, Melissa, if you can make me a note to research that a little bit. Um, typically, I direct people toward um, very pink knits. I, I know that Romy Hill has quite a few videos, but I don't know that they're accessible for the general public. So Diana will look into that for you and see what I can find. But starting with a smaller project is probably the way to go versus a shawl is gonna have quite a few beads in it. So, I got another box of yarn from Earth, which you guys saw the box. I did not get any more of the colors that the um, that we've used for the Papillon, for the butterfly, but I did get five more colors of their fingering weight self-striping yarn. So this is not the best graphic, but they do have this little chart that shows, gives an example of how their striping yarn, their sock yarn stripes. Whoop, sorry about that. So it's short color repeats. Um, if you did socks, it would be, it would be short stripes. When you do the, the papillon or the butterfly shawl, you end up with kind of your um, short row little sections are one color. That yarn is used in, where's this other little shawl? We talked about this when I was talking about the one skein projects. Taina. I know I've mentioned this before, but sorry, Melissa, I didn't warn you about this one. T-A-I-N-A. -I, I know it's backwards. I apologize. But you can see how, obviously, the fewer stitches you have, the wider the stripes. As you get more stitches on, your stripes get narrower and narrower. Isn't this a cool color? It just so happens to be. I'm going to take these out of the bag because they're loud and shiny and you can't see them. Happens to be one of the colors that I got. It's really cool how, for, for the most part, I wouldn't look at this in the skein and think that it's self-striping. Most people wouldn't. Luckily, they say it on their label, hand-dyed self-striping yarn. But to do something like this, it takes one. If you wanted to do a larger project, it would take more. 
they are fingering weight 2690 26.50 a skein 435 yards in 100 grams this is color 02 they do have dye lots it says machine wash cold lay flat to dry 100% extra fine super wash merino um, the way they spin their yarn the plies on it is really cool uh, I maybe I've mentioned it before it, it some people will have a hard time because it it might have a tendency to split more but you just have to find a way to knit with it that some of it might be the, the type of needles the material whether that works or not but the the end result with their yarns is just this really squishy beautiful fabric that really has a tendency not to pill very much that cowl that I did this is the worsted weight version of their yarn held with a solid purple or striped with a solid purple um, it really has a tendency to hold its hold its shape not pill very much um, the yarn that I'm using for my four-day sweater has the same construction it's not a self striping yarn but it has that the way the yarn is spun is is the same so I'm excited to see how it holds up in a sweater so that's the first color I got what did I say it was O2 The second color I got is, look at how bright and beautiful that is. Color four. Aren't they gorgeous? So let's see if I look on here, right there, that's color four. There's color two. Color four. You know, I was talking about doing a, um, a tube scarf with all my scraps a tube scarf with something like this would be really cool too and a very a good travel project when you just want to keep knitting Diane unique is so nice to knit with and squishy yes it is very squishy even in the skein it's squishy stuff let me look and see if I missed anybody else's comments Cora I have another cowl to make from the nest and burrow you I could beat it yes yes you could Joyce just learned a new beading technique with one of the socks Aww. we're gonna have to talk about that I like learning new things Joyce is still in the running on sock madness she was the last person to qualify on this last round for her team so we need to keep cheering her on she's she's got a lot going on and hopefully sock knitting is keeping her um, a little bit Zen as much as possible Melissa I always wanted to pronounce it uneek <laughs> maybe it is uneek but I assume it's unique <laughs> maybe I'm saying it wrong I don't know no I think my rep has called and we've talked about it before so that's color four next is color 24 it's got more rusts golds oranges more of a periwinkle blue it does have a pop of pink and a pop of purple in there really cool um deb deb hennessy i don't know if you watch the videos but um deb has been making um cowls the pattern is called shiprock two and it works phenomenally with self-striping yarn i may end up knitting one up with one of these um, I'll show you maybe not I had a sample here but it was with yarn um, that was dyed for the shop and I don't have any more of that yarn so I probably tucked that away somewhere two more yeah. this one Look at that, those turquoises. There is this deep, like a grape, grape jelly purple almost. And then that bright green, really, really cool. This is color number 12. 
So let me see if I can find it on here. Right there, color 12. And I apologize, you guys. I know this is not the best, the best way to see those colors, but it at least gives you an idea of how they stripe. I know, Christina, isn't it gorgeous? I think it would make good, um, it would make a good sweater, not sweater, scarf for um, a guy or socks too. I, I mean, it's got that deep purple in there, but it's not like a girly purple. <laughs> Diane, how can you choose one of each? I know, that's my problem when they have 25 different colors when I'm ordering I want to order them all. And the last one might look a little bit familiar. This is color 25. Oh, so it's the very last one on the chart, but this is color 25. It is the fingering weight version of that cowl I just showed you. So it's going to stripe similarly. This one I love too, it's so bright. And you can see there's the sock weight one, the fingering weight one. There's the worsted weight one. It's kind of neat to see how you can, um, the size of the yarn makes it look completely different. Obviously it's going to, the fingering weight, you're gonna get more repeats of the color than you would the worsted. But I think it's really cool. So those are the five, five new colors of unique fingering. Melissa, if you can find that the Shiprock 2 pattern, it's all one word, S-H-I-P-R-O-C-K, 2. Uh, the designer has two different ones. It's got this little stair-steppy thing. Cora, need one of 24. Yes, you do. Everybody does. <laughs> Um, and if, if we can't post it in here, I will post it after with some pictures. I feel like I said that before last week and then I forgot. I need to get better about my notes. <laughs> I'll get there. If I could just get my, my 15 year old to help me and do kind of show notes. There we go. Melissa's got it on there. Then I wouldn't have to go back each week and say, did I talk about that already? We'll get there. I'm learning. All right. I think that is everything. Um, thank you all for joining me. I appreciate your input on what I should knit next. Uh, sounds like it's going to be a springy summer top. Hmm. One more thing. Tell me if you have a preference on sleeves or no sleeves because I know some people don't feel comfortable showing their, um, their upper arms or their shoulders. Um, and I know I've done a couple either sleeveless or like the tank style. I had that one shredded one that was all ripped up. Um, but let me know if you, if you have a preference on that too. I'm, I'm curious to see, again, I wanna make things that, that will entice people to to try something new, get out of their comfort zone a little bit, but in a way that they can see themselves wearing something when it's done. Three quarter length sleeves are my fave. Well, it's hard to do a three quarter length sleeve for a summer top, but I can do that for some of the other ones for sure. Melissa, a flutter sleeve. <laughs> you guys want me to do all the things that require more knitting and more yarn. <laughs> <laughs> and I just want to hurry up and be done, which is why I like the sleeveless things. There is a pattern um, called Cesaria, C-E-S-A-R-I-A, -A, um, that I think is really cool. And I, I've got that one, I've got my eye on that one for a summer top that's got a little bit of a cap sleeve on it and it's knit side to side. I want to use um, a cotton color changing yarn I think would be really neat. I'm trying to be more mindful of the number of people that don't like horizontal stripes. So it would make kind of vertical lines and I think it'd be really cool. All right, 
I think that's it. I hope you guys um, have a great weekend, a great week. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope you have a great week. Uh, the sun was out today, which is fantastic. The wind could calm down any time now, but I don't want snow. I'm okay with sun. And Thursday, again, if you're part of our knit along, you're welcome to join the craft along group. Join us on Zoom if you have any questions or just want to hang out with us. And I will see you all next Monday. Have a great night. Thanks for joining me. Bye.